Hey guys, Darren back again. So, two minutes ago I plugged in this PS3 controller to my console. You know, I wanted to play some old PS3 games that I hadn't had a chance to finish yet. I was at the main title screen and, you know, I'm wanting to select a game. But what was happening is the menu was just jumping around up and down and left and right and it was really sporadic. It was just, it was acting as though I was pushing buttons, but I wasn't. So, the controller is obviously at fault here. So, uh, you know, here we are on the bench. I've got a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm ready to pull this thing apart because I can't play any games and, uh, you know, I've only got this one controller. Um, so I think it's something simple going on. And as a quick test, I, um, I squeezed it about here. So both sides, put some pressure on it and then tried the controllers and everything seemed fine. So it kind of tells me that there's some contacts in here uh, that have just... Um, you know, maybe they're dirty or they're loose or there's something going on or there's some solder joints that are dry or broken. So let's uh, let's pull this thing apart and take a quick look. It should be a quick fix and, you know, I want to play some games. So hopefully I can get this back together in about 10 minutes flat. So let's do it. Uh, if we flip it over and have a look, uh, we've, got a, we've got five screws, just Phillips head, uh, just a pretty small one. So I'll go ahead and pull those screws out and we'll go from there and we'll open it up. Okay, so those screws are all out. Uh, I've got them just off camera up there. Um, just the five, so let's, um, let's start opening this up. It's, it's started to come apart already, so I think if we just kind of crack this case, it should come apart. It's a little bit stiff, actually. Um, got a little t spatula tool here. To, there we go. Okay, um, not sure what's going to happen with these buttons, but we'll probably lose them. Okay, getting there. All right. All right, we got one and we lost one. That's all right. No problem. Um, let's pull that back out. So that's just going to sit back there. That's fine. That's okay. All right. So we've got our battery in the middle. We've got our rumble packs on the side. So, okay. Let's, um, let's pull this out. Okay. Battery's out. All right. Lost the other button. That's cool. We'll put that back later. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Switch one. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. There's actually a actually a button there on the back of the case. Like a must be a reset button or something. Pushes that button there. Huh. All right. So we need to dig a bit deeper. I think we need to get un to the underside of this board. So let me take out this screw down in here. Take that out. and see what happens. Ah, I see. Okay, so we've got our thumbsticks there. Aha, we've got, a, we've got a, some sort of ribbon touchpad and corresponding contacts up here on the board. So yeah, that explains why squeezing around here made a difference. So, all right, I think we're onto something. Um, so what does this ribbon actually do? Does the LEDs, uh, it transmits all the, the button signals. Okay, well that explains it. So I was getting a um, erratic up, down, left and right off the D-pad. So yeah, it's coming through that ribbon, coming into the board. So I think the contacts are gonna be dirty or just misaligned or something's going on. So let's just lift this ribbon up. Okay. So that's definitely the, the contact side on the top there. And there's a bit of foam, all right. Yeah, you know what? It could just be this bit of foam. Um, if that's simply providing squashing sort of pressure um, against that contact in the board, that'd explain it. As over time, 
pieces of foam and rubber like this just, just wear out. So they lose some of their sponginess. So we might be oversimplifying it, but I think if we just pack this up a little bit with a bit of material on the back and put it back in and jam it all back together with a bit of pressure, uh, it may work. Obviously I've touched these contacts with my fingers, so I'll use isopropyl alcohol to clean that off at the last minute but that could be it. So let me just um, find some tape or something or maybe a bit of card or paper to put underneath that and just give it some lift and uh, we'll give that a go. Okay, so I found some, um, some postage labels actually. Uh, they might actually do it, they're just made of paper but they're, they're adhesive so they're, they're quite thick and, um, and they're sticky. So we can probably build up a bit of a layer here. So if I just pull that bit of foam out um, get, a, get a Stanley knife, like a, a razor, and how am I going to do this? Um, yeah, look, let's just cut some pieces, so, where's the edge of that? The edge is there, okay. So do a very basic trace. Right, so we've got the size. Um, yeah, that should do it. Pull that bit of sticky paper out. Um, put that on, put that on the under, no, I'll put it on the top side actually. No, put it on the underside, on, down onto the plastic. So that'll stop the foam sinking in so far. We'll give it a little bit more height naturally. So that sticks on, so let's just do another one. Just peel it off. Another piece of tape. You know what, just tape would do as well. Um, so yeah, electrical tape or masking tape is probably going to be fine too. Yeah, this is a very uh, backyard sort of fix, but I think it might be all we need. So, Okay, so I've built that up with a few layers of this um, adhesive sort of sticky paper stuff. Um, it's not much thicker, but it's a little bit. And I'll, I'll put it on the bottom, um, and therefore I think it's going to stop it uh, sinking down into that plastic down there. So could put it on the top but I think on the bottom is better so well you know I don't really know it's all trial and error at this stage but so I'll sit that there and we'll put our ribbon back over back over those little posts it's a little bit fiddly that okay yeah just like that make sure that it's, yeah, it needs to go back up um, that direction a little bit just to get make sure it's under that far pin, which it is now. All right, I think that's ready to reassemble. Done with that. We're done with that. Um, okay, let me get the isoprop and we'll give that a quick clean. Okay, here's some isoprop. Um, isopropyl alcohol. Um, just tidy up this a little bit. Okay, get that out of shot. All right, so let's uh, you know spray a bit in the lid. Just get our cotton tip, and let's clean those contacts. Just cleaning it might actually be enough to fix this problem, but I think we should. I think what we did is a good idea. So can't hurt. Yeah, look, there's a bit of little bit of stuff coming off that. It's not too bad actually. A really good clean. Use the other end. Go back over that one. All right, that's enough of that. Now let's try and put this back together without touching it. Just feel the pressure on that. Yeah, there's a little bit more pressure on that. It's a really poor design. Hmm. 
I don't like it as, as a design, but it is what it is. You know, we've only got one screw down here and I guess the case itself helps to clamp it down. But you know, we really should have had some screws up in there to really give it nice, even downward pressure. And I wouldn't have even used that type of ribbon. I would have used um, a slot in type ribbon or a different type of cable mechanism altogether. Something, you know, like something more reliable, like a clip-in system. So anyway, it is what it is. Um, I won't complain much longer. Let's put this battery back in. Goes that way. Actually, I should put that <clears throat> screw in to stop the board moving about. So put that back. Okay, that's all in, it's nice and tight. Put this back in. Now, I didn't pay too much attention when I pulled that out, but I think it goes that way. Yeah, it seems to sit there really nicely, so that's the way it's going. Just tuck those wires down there out of the way. Now, we probably need to reinsert our buttons, so those little springs just need to rock forward like that and yep yeah that's fine and then that one as well just pull that forward put it in all right so that's all good they're all still connected okay and put our case back on so um Put the buttons through first, I guess. There we go. That was nice. That went very well. <laughs> Too easy, all right. I think I'm gonna have to screw this down to give it a proper test, um, just to give it nice clamping pressure. So I'll just go ahead and do that off camera. I'll screw it all back together and we'll give it a quick test. Okay, so we're over here at the TV. Uh, I've got the controller cabled up. Um, yeah, it was quite flat, so that's uh, just charging now. But looking at the TV, um, we had a really stable menu, so I think um, I think we're all okay. Like this isn't, um, it's not jittering around at all. It's very predictable, so I can um, I can use the stick, I can use the D-pad, and everything's responding really well. So I think we might have fixed it. Just a little bit of tape, and uh, we're off and running. So it's a pretty easy little backyard fix. So I'm gonna give this a proper playthrough. I'll, I'm gonna play a game now and just give this controller a, a bit of a workout and make sure it is solid. Um, and if I have to open it up again, I will. I'll, I'll open it up and put some more tape in, but I think it's probably okay. So uh, what game have I got? I can't remember what I was going to play. Oh, there we go, Red Dead Redemption. Awesome. There you go. So. I never finished this game, it was a real, um, it's a great game, I just didn't get around to finishing it, so I'm gonna give that a shot right now, test out the controller, and we'll see how it all goes. All right guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.